Good gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are my favorite teenagers doing? Not today, every day the teenagers. Can everybody hear me okay? Because I don't think this thing is working. Can you hear me back there? Yes. Excellent. I'll project my voice. I just am grateful that I have so many wonderful, loving, caring people in my district. And that includes everyone in this room and those that we couldn't have here today because the room isn't big enough. Uh. But I'm fortunate to be surrounded by so many beautiful people, inside and out. And I'm grateful to you for being in my life. So let's talk a little bit about our seniors. We just passed a budget of $153 billion. Wow. After education, where we spent historic numbers, one in six dollars was spent in education because that is our future. And I fought hard alongside many of my colleagues to make sure that we invested in the next generation. Yeah. When we secured that funding, the next priority for me were my seniors to make sure that those in their golden age don't right. go without. To make sure those that paved the road for me get all of the entitlements and the protections and the services that they need to live comfortably. And I have to tell you, this is probably the most uncertain time ever, at least in my history. And we have seniors that are concerned from health care to housing to services, it's a very difficult time. And in the assembly, we made sure that we took every bit of precaution, regardless of what happens in the federal government, to make sure that you are protected, that your quality of life is maintained, that you truly get to enjoy your golden years as you deserve. I'm proud of that fact. I'm proud of the assembly, what we delivered, and I'm proud to be there and stand up for all of my seniors. It's like, like this is my favorite event. I love spoiling my teenagers. <laughs> I love recognizing their beauty, their creativity. And when we came up with this a few years ago, I think this is our fifth year, where we ask our ladies to come in with their bonnets and their gowns, and we get them to do a little trotting and show it off and do a little strut. It lets us escape with a few hours to put aside any of the hurdles and problems that we have in our life and just enjoy one another. And it allows me to enjoy you, but more importantly, and I share this with all of my seniors, when I go into an event, I feel the love. I feel the embracement from my seniors. And that empowers me. That gives me strength. So ladies, and the few gentlemen that are here, thank you for giving me the strength to serve this great state and the 8th Assembly District. So now I share a little bit of news with you. Some of you in this room may already know. I've announced my candidacy to run for city council. Yeah. 
Why is this so important? Because in the last five years, which have been the most incredible experience of my life, the most humbling experience, I realized that it's about the potholes, the street lights, the graffiti, the stop sign, the quality of life issues. In the city council, it will enable me to be here more. We do great work in Albany. But being accessible, being here to meet one-on-one -on -one and address the issues is where I get the greatest feeling of pride that I can be here to help someone during their most difficult issues. So I'm looking forward to taking this journey with all of you as we move toward this primary election. And I encourage you to please get out the vote. I will never let you down. I will never disappoint any of you. What you've entrusted me with is something near and dear. And I'll always fight hard for you. God bless you. Thank you so much. So now for the fun part. We have the mayor waiting for us at the Bronx House. And I have to sit down with the man. We got a little thing going there because we have to bring to his attention some of the issues in yeah. our community. So I'm not leaving for a photo op. I'm leaving for business. But I'm not going to miss this for anything in the world. They surprised us with that visit. I fought for that visit. I wanted a town hall done in this area so we can share with the mayor what issues are impacting our community. He did a second best thing. He said, I'll meet you halfway. After I do my tour of the Bronx, I'll have an event at the Bronx House, and there I can hear some of the issues one-on-one. -on -one. So this is an opportunity that we talk to him about Pelham Parkway, the construction, mm -hmm. we talk about safety, we talk about our programs, yes. we talk about our streets, our children, and our seniors. And that's where I'll be in about five minutes. I just want, because you're all special, but I want to acknowledge a couple of people that are here with us today. Joe McManus, our state committeeman. Andrea Siegel, our district leader. Do you have any other elected officials that I miss? I'm here. We're all special. <laughs> <laughs> we're all kings and queens, and we're all princesses and princes. You don't have a title, do you? No title. No, no title. <laughs> she just calls herself boss. So all the bosses in the room. So I just want to do this quickly. I want every year we acknowledge best hat and best dress. And we give them a little prize. And I want you to know that this year it was up as always. Yeah. A difficult choice. But I'm sure you'll all agree with me. For best dress. And she's going to show us what she's got. And she's going to wiggle and jiggle a little for us. We have none other than Audrey Mack herself. Colin, Audrey Mack. Audrey Mack, best dressed ladies, do you agree? Now, because I did it again last year and I did it repeat it this year. Best hat! This was a real hard one, right? We were battling this one because we couldn't figure this one out. Too many choices. Our very own 